This is Gene Garino, the founder of the Residential Assisted Living Academy, and I'm going to share with you how to turn a single family home into a cash flow machine. My guess is some of you have heard about senior housing and the baby boomers, and you're wondering how to take advantage of it from a business perspective on the real estate side as well as business side. So I'm going to share that with you right now. My background, I've been in real estate since I was 18 years old. First property was no money down because I had no money, had no credit. First commercial was the age of 25 and I haven't stopped since. I've had 17 businesses over the last 39 years from a professional musician, record label, recording studio, to being a certified financial planner in the US and even licensed in Australia. I've taught over a quarter of a million people and mentored thousands and thousands on business and real estate. In addition to that, I've been married for 30 years to the love of my life and I've got four beautiful kids and my first grandchild. So that's a little bit about me personally. And I've taught people all over the world how to do what I'm going to share with you right now. And if this is something you want to do, now is the time to get in. And I was on a cruise this year and it was with Robert Kiyosaki and the real estate guys. And while I was there, Robert pulled me aside. He said, tell me about residential assisted living. Tell me about the opportunity that I have in Phoenix, Arizona. And I shared it with him. And when he pulled me aside and asked me that question, I thought to myself, wow, here's the man and he is asking the same questions that you are. How do I get involved? How do I step up my game and get involved in this niche? So he's interested, so are you, so let's make it happen. The first question is why? Why residential assisted living? Why now and why you? Those three questions, the why is so important because if you answer the why, everything else will become clear and step by step. And I know for a lot of you, it's simply the money and I get that, but I'm gonna encourage you to do good and do well. But when I say $10,000 a month, net cash flow for life, that's a significant amount of money. As a matter of fact, if you just do one, just one deal in the next six to 12 months, you literally could be set for life. You could stop working, you could retire, or you could do a second and a third home and expand, you decide, but one and done is a great way to go. My why, my kids, my mom, my grandchild. On the right hand side is my oldest daughter, Victoria, and in the center right there, that is my grandchild, Farron, and here on the right, that's my mom. Now, my mom, she's 82 years old and she's not feeling good, not doing great, not doing well with her medication, and she needed help. That's when we discovered assisted living. And I couldn't find what I was looking for. All I could find was the big box. Looked like an institution and felt like one too. So I said, I'm gonna create it in a residential setting because I know it's good for me, my family, my mom, and I know it would be good for others. And that's where it all came from. That's my why, and that's what I'm gonna share with you. Now, what is it? What is residential assisted living? Very simply put, it's a group residence for seniors that provides assistance with their activities of daily living. You see it there in gold, A-D-L. Those are the letters that you'll hear. What are the A-D-Ls? Activities of daily living. When you woke up this morning, what did you do? You got out of bed, you got dressed, you brushed your teeth, you ate food, you did your laundry, and so on. Those are the things where those seniors need assistance with. It's not a nursing home. That's what this is, your typical common nursing home. It's not that. Put some barbed wire and gun turrets on the roof, it looks like a prison. It's not that. And it's not this, The Golden Girls, a show from the 80s where four mature women coming together, taking care of each other. It's not that, it's somewhere right in between where there's caregivers 24 seven, but it's in a residential setting. It's a regular house. You may be living next door to one, you wouldn't even know it. But inside, instead of a family and two kids and two dogs, it's a group of seniors enjoying life together and living life together, doing everything that you and I do as well. So it's the concept of doing good and doing well. That's where I wanna begin this conversation. So should I just own the real estate? That's a great question. Because I know a lot of you are in the real estate game and that's your angle, that's what you do. And owning the real estate is a great way to go. Because most people who own real estate make $100, $200 a month in positive cash flow after all their expenses and so on. If there's one vacancy and some turnover expense, it could wipe out the entire year of profit. But if you could lease your home for twice the fair market rent, all that extra money is straight into your pocket and that's a beautiful thing. That's significant residual income. So owning the real estate and leasing it to the operator of the business at up to twice the fair market rent is a great way to go. You might be wondering why would they pay twice the fair market rent? Because they're gonna be making five, 10, 15, $20,000 a month in profit operating the business. And they're not gonna want a short lease of one year. They're gonna want a three year or a five year lease with two or three five year renewals. They're gonna operate a business that's very, very profitable. They want to be in that location for a long time. Are you okay with that? 
I mean, if you have a long-term tenant with low impact, they're not trashing the home. They're not taking apart motorcycles in the family room. They're not raising Rottweilers in the third bathroom. It's a group of seniors living in that home. And your tenant is a business operating the business, taking care of the home so they can charge those seniors significant rents. So that's what it is. That's how it works in this last piece, significant residual income. Let's face it, if you're making $100 or $200 a month on a rent home, if you could rent it for twice the fair market rent, the extra $2,000, double the rent, goes straight into your pocket. And if it's a long-term tenant, no vacancies, no minor repairs, it's a wonderful way to go when it comes to the real estate. But again, I want you to remember, do good and do well. We're going to be able to do something good for other people. We're going to leave a legacy. We're going to help a ton of people. And we're going to be able to do very well financially. So there's the concept. It's all laid out for you. So let's dig in. What do you really want? People that I meet want to be at the right place at the right time. Now, here's the deal. You have been at the right place at the right time, but you may have missed your opportunity. This you cannot miss. The baby boomers are here. The mega trend, the 77 million baby boomers, they're not in assisted living today, but their parents are. Their parents are 70, 80, and 90 years old. They're in the assisted living. There's waiting lists for them now, but as the boomers age and add into those homes and people live longer than ever, our opportunity is bigger and bigger every single year. So in addition to that, when I say little or no competition, right now with what you do, how much competition do you have? How easy is it to find a home at under the fair market value that you can repair and sell it for full market price? It's not as easy as it used to be when the market was down. Realistically, I have very little, if any, competition in most markets throughout the country. Little or no competition in a crystal ball. Well, I'm going to share with you exactly what my crystal ball says, and here's the facts, here's the figures. 77 million baby boomers with 10,000 people a day on average turning 65. 4,000 people a day on average turning 85, and 70% of those people need help with their activities of daily living for an average of three and a half years. So my crystal ball says they need a place to live and they need assistance, and that's where we come in, residential assisted living. So now, what do other investors do? What kind of competition do you have now? Do you know anybody that's doing fix and flip, wholesale, foreclosures, short sales? Maybe they're doing just rent homes or apartments or storage units or notes. That's exactly what most people do when it comes to real estate investing. Every RIA that you go to, every meeting that you attend, that's what the competition is doing and you're competing directly head-to-head -head with them. Yeah, I know it's camaraderie and it's teammates, but you're competing with them. But how many people do you know that are doing assisted living? Very little. How many people do you know that are aging in your area? Everybody. This is something that is needed. Very few people are doing it, and you're at the beginning of this wave, this tsunami that is unstoppable. Now is the time. So with residential assisted living, you are at the right place at the right time with very little, if any, competition. And you're taking advantage of the biggest opportunity in your lifetime when it comes to real estate and business. Those aren't my words. That's from Harry S. Dent in his book, The Demographic Cliff, where it talks about assisted living being the opportunity of our lifetimes. So I'm going to give you more information, but if you'd like to go straight to our website, go for it. RALacademy.com. RALacademy.com. Or if you'd like to talk to somebody and ask questions, here's the number, 480-704-3065. 480-704-3065. So the next question is, well, where's the big money investing? I think that's a great way to really find out where you should be, where the opportunity is. And they are putting their money into senior housing. $15 billion in construction going on right now in senior housing. When you take a look at this chart, the dark line on the right, it shows you senior housing compared to every other opportunity, whether it be retail, industrial, or office buildings, and so on. You can see in the last one year, three year, five year, and now 10 year period, senior housing outpaces them all. So now the common questions. People always ask the question, Gene, do I need to be in the medical field? The answer is no. You don't need to be a doctor, a nurse, a physical therapist, or any of that. Some people ask, well, Gene, can I use a home that I have right now for this? The answer is maybe, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. The key is location. Is it the right location? We can rebuild the house from scratch, but the location is critical. We'll get to that. And then the question is, well, how much money can I make? And I get that. That is exciting, but the concept of $10,000 a month is an average home. I'm going to suggest, I'm going to encourage you to do an above average home. 
Now, let me walk you through those numbers so you understand what I mean by an average home. Right now in the United States, the average home private room is $3,600 for an individual per month. $3,600 per month. So if you have a home that's licensed for 10 residents, you might have six, you might have eight, you could have 16. Let's say it's 10, 3,600 times 10 is potential gross income of $36,000. But there are expenses, and what are those expenses? Well, those expenses are everything that you and I have when we live our daily lives. Food, utilities, rent, and so on. The things on the list that are a little unusual are licensed to do the business, caregivers, manager. Those are the things that are unique to this business. When you add that all up, if your home is full, that could be 20,000 plus. But another way of doing it, you're the manager, you're the caregiver, you're the cook, the laundress, the, it could be 10 grand. There's a lot of people that move to this country and do this as a business. Their expenses are 10,000 or less. Their income is 25, 35, 40,000 or more. And they're driving brand new BMWs. And they move to this country with little or no education. But I don't want you to doing all that work. I want you to hire the manager, hire the caregiver so they do it. So let's assume you're on the high end. Your expenses are 21000 And again, that's if the house is full, it includes vacancies and so on. And now we need to add in one last piece, the debt service or the rent. And even if you own the home, I want to encourage you to do it in a separate entity. Lease the property from yourself so you're still going to call it rent. So let's say you have $5,000 earmarked for debt service or for rent. 36 minus 21 minus 5 still leaves you with $10,000 a month net. And that's an average home. I want you to do above average home. That's $120,000 a year. That's twice the national average of the household income in America today. And you can do that within the next 6 to 12 months. Step by step, I'll walk you through. So now you have a feel for what it's like, but could you get by on $10,000 a month? You know, when I do a live presentation and I'm sitting in front of people, I always ask the question, how much do you need? How much money do you need on a monthly basis to pay your bills? And people come up with a number, and it could be 10,000, 5,000, 25,000, but 10,000 seems to be that magic number. Not that they're spending it now, but if they had that, everything would be taken care of. They could go on the extra vacation. They could take the time off. So let's assume one home produced that 10,000. The question is, would you rather do rent homes where you have 50 or 100 homes making 50 or $100 a month each to make your 10,000 or just one single home, one assisted living home? Well, I know what choice I've made. You decide. But when you can do it once, can you do it twice or three times? That's what we call a three pack. Imagine three times that income. Now, we'll walk you through that process, but let's go through the potential on an upscale home because I gave it to you on an average home. Let's assume you're charging higher than average, let's say $5,000. By the way, in some states, some cities, that is the average right there. That would be an average home. So let's just go a little bit above, not level two, but level three or four, a little above average. Level five is on the top, one is on the bottom. But if you did $5,000 per person times 10, that's potential gross income of 50,000. Your expenses are virtually the same, but let's throw a little bit more in, an extra $1,000 a week. And let's add to your debt service or the rent you're paying, make it five, no, make it seven. So now you're netting $18,000 a month or two sixteen dollars a year. Take a look at that number. I mean, right there, you're in the top 1% in our country today. And you could be there in the next six to 12 months with just one single home. Now, if you're serious, that's what I teach people how to do. And I've done it for hundreds and thousands of people all around the country. And you can do it as well. So as we walk through this, the next question is, how will I participate? Notice I didn't say, will you? You will. You will be involved one way or the other. You're either going to own the real estate or the business, or you're going to be lying in a bed where somebody else is charging you money so they can take care of you when it's your time. So let me walk you through the how will I. You could either own the real estate and lease it to somebody else, get twice the fair market rent. Good choice. Option two, own the real estate and the, operate the business, and now you make the lion's share. Better choice. Or forget everything I've said, everything you've heard, and just figure it out and let your kids figure it out, and they'll be paying five or 10000 a month to take care of you. You know what? That's not a great solution. That's why I put it in red. If nothing else, do one of these homes so you can make lots of money today, help people today, retire, give the money away if you don't need it, and then you've got a solution for yourself when it's time for you to move into the home. Don't leave your kids with a burden. Leave them with a solution that produces cash flow even after you're gone. That's the legacy that we talk about. So at this point, how fast can I do this is the next question most people have. 
Well, the slowest way is to buy land, get it planned, go to the city. It'll take a year, two or three. Faster, buy an existing home in the right location. Renovate it, get it up and running six to 12 months. Even faster, buy an existing licensed home and we'll show you exactly how to do that. Even faster, own the real estate and lease it to the operator. Fastest of all, be the lender, just the private lender that lends money on the real estate or the business. Now those are your methods of participating financially and you can also have the benefit of moving into the home when you want to. So we're right back to where we started. Why residential assisted living? Why now and why you? Does it check your boxes? Does it give you what you want? The ability to have significant residual income, the ability to help other people, the ability to provide for your long-term care and leave a legacy. If it check your boxes, well then this is where you should be going. Right here, just like Tracy and Justin in Utah, their first home allows Justin to get out of the sky. He's a pilot and he likes what he does, but it takes him away from his kids. If he's at home with his own assisted living and they've got their first one up and running, I'm so proud of these guys. And lo, his goal, he knows he can go work for somebody else and make their dream a reality or he can make his dream a reality. He's got his first two homes up and they're beautiful. I love what he's done. He's followed our directions to a T. Beautiful homes in the right area. Or Cedric, he's an anesthesiologist and his wife Michelle is very supportive, but he knows as any kind of doctor does that that game is kind of going down the tubes. The ability to help people has gone out the wayside. It's now become a business and their hands are tied. But with one assisted living facility, he can make as much or more than he can as an anesthesiologist. And how, when he came to our training in Arizona, he came from Minnesota. And he said, do I have to do it in Minnesota? I said, no. He said, I want to be involved, but I don't want to be involved. So if I do it in another state, is that okay? Absolutely, yes. As a matter of fact, if you don't want to be involved, the best thing might be to do it in a different city, in a different state. That way you're not tempted to go over there every day. Your goal is to work five or 10 hours a week, not 40, 50 hours a week. Here's Hal's first home. He's now in his fifth home in Arizona, and he lives in Minnesota. Carla Lee, when she came in, she's from Albuquerque, she came to the training and she's just crushed it. Within five months after her training, she had her first three homes up and running. She's now on her seventh home and her next one after that, she's going big, 151 units. I'm so proud of her and she's doing awesome. Now, this is her first home, just kind of a normal average home. Here's her second home. When I first saw this, I said, wow, it looks kind of small. But once I walked in the door, the thing opened up and I said, this is perfect. She listened. I taught her. She's doing wonderfully. Brian, I met him in Panama, I told him about assisted living. He's in New Jersey and he said, I've got a home. It's in the right location. It's got the right things wrong with it. And you'll know exactly what I mean when I teach you. And this home itself is a beautiful, huge home. Two main floors, an attic and a basement. I said, first thing is we need access. So he has now actually installed an elevator through the entire home and that allows him to have 14 residents. He'll be making net thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars a month for the rest of his life. It's a beautiful project, a wonderful thing. Now, Greg, when he came to the training, he couldn't hold himself back. He got so excited, he went out and bought a house before he even came to the training. I nicknamed it the Mint Mansion. You see it in the background there, but nobody else wanted it because it was 7,500 square feet in the middle of a neighborhood of 1,500 and 2,000 square foot homes. This monstrosity is perfect for what we do. Nobody else wanted it, so he picked it up for a song. And then Boone and Davis right here in South Florida, these two are starting in a modest middle-class neighborhood here with their first residential assisted living. I love to go out and meet my students doing it in the field. And Tyler and Clayton right here with that beautiful building in the background, they're gonna be turning that one into a home as well. So this is a wonderful time to get involved in this and knowledge is the key. You wanna know what to do and what not to do and you'd rather learn from somebody else's mistakes than your own. But I've literally just touched the tip of the iceberg and if you would like to learn more, I'm gonna give you two opportunities to do exactly that. The first one is what we call the fast track. It's a three day training that is absolutely packed with all the information that you need from beginning to end. How to find it, fund it, fill it, how to market, how to get the word out, how to fill the home, how to operate it. And that is done in a three day period of time. It's a fast track for those people that want to get it done quickly. The second option is a home study course where you don't come to me, but it comes to you. It's available starting today, 24 seven, share it with your family and it walks you through in depth every step of the way. Again, if you could do one home in the next six to 12 months and create the financial freedom that you really want with that significant residual income, would you be willing to do what it takes? 
Well, the reality is you can do that, and the fast track is the best way. Home study is second best, but a great solution. If you come to the fast track, the three day training, day one, we learn all the facts. Day two, it's the context for the content. We get in a bus, we go in the field, we see a level three, a level four, a level five home. You meet the managers, the caregivers, the residents, you really see it from the inside out, and that's where everything becomes real. And then in day three, we come back and we go ahead and we walk through real deals. We crunch the numbers. We talk about raising capital. Here's a secret. This is the easiest thing I've ever raised capital for. I mean, if you've tried to raise money, private capital from other people before and had a hard time, this is the easiest thing I've ever raised capital for. You talk to people about senior housing and residential living and the mega trade of the baby boomers, their question is, how much? When can I get in? I want to be a part of this. We will teach you how to raise capital, how to do it, how to even go to the banks and do it. You absolutely can. The home study course is online. It's available on DVD as well. And it's designed in such a way to walk you through step by step. Everything is there. That three day training is a great solution too. But if you'd like to learn about either one, go to our website, ralacademy.com. Call the number 480-704-3065. Go ahead and call, ask questions. Let's get you started. 480-704-3065. Again, the website is ralacademy.com. If you're interested in learning how to do good and do well, how to create significant residual income, how to really change things for your family, your legacy and what you leave behind, if this checks your boxes and it's really where your heart is at, I highly encourage you to take the next step. Go ahead and click the button, go to the website, call the number, take the next step for you. This is Gene. I'm the founder of the Residential Assisted Living Academy, encouraging you to do good and do well.